Hello and welcome to your June edition of Circus Scoop. Um, guess where I've been this month? Boom. Um, and in fact, fact, I've been to three Big Top circuses um, since I recorded the last video and I will talk about those a little bit later on. Uh, I've also been to Paris for a circus conference and that's launched our first ever Circus Diaries vlog. So the link is below. Please check it out, subscribe to the channel because we are now going to start updating with videos much more regularly than just the monthly what's on. Um, so yeah, it's our fourth anniversary this week and that's our birthday present to ourselves, a new YouTube channel. Yee. So yeah, please subscribe, tell your friends and we'd love to hear your comments in the marks below. Um, what else have I been up to? I went to take the minutes for the latest advisory board meeting for Circus 250, which is um, a committee of people working in various arts and circus industries who are looking to um, promote and um, just organise the celebrations next year that will commemorate 250 years since the first modern circus. So it seems fitting that we begin our What's On Where guide in Newcastle under Lyme. That is the birthplace of Philip Astley, who created that first circus in 1768. So on the 24th of June, Newcastle under Lyme are having their fourth annual homecoming day, which is um, a celebration of bringing the modern circus back to where it was born. Um, so it's a whole day of outdoor spectacles and entertainment. Uh, they haven't released their full programme yet, but I know Gandini Juggling are on the bill. And also um, Andrew Van Buren, who is a magician and is also um, part of the heritage team that's organising the Philip Astley project to bring the history to life in the town. Um, if we stick in the Midlands, then there's also Peter Jolly's Circus, uh, Charles Chipperfield's Circus and Ooh. Oh yes, Circus Fantasia, still touring around there. Um, Gifford's Circus are moving through Oxfordshire. Which way's the map go? Yes, it goes that side of me, doesn't it? Yes, through Oxfordshire uh, towards London uh, with their new show, Any Port in a Storm. Um, that is another one of the shows that I have seen, so I will be coming on to that. Um, in around the M25 area, Boom. There is... Oh no, it is usually the other side of me, isn't it? Oh, well, we'll just have to swap sides, won't we? Around the M25 area, boom, um, there is uh, Circus Fantasia, Circus Wonderland, Cirque Normandie, and if you go inside to London, the Underbelly Festival has um, got underway already. It is um, got a Lulacia with their... Uh, debut show Hyena, which will be running from the 6th till the 11th, and I saw an excerpt of that at Canvas in April, and they have some really um, innovative and interesting combinations of like, three female performers and their three serials, um, and also singing, the music was really good. Um, so yes, that is on at the Underbelly Festival. There's also a longer running show of Trappe Moi by Flip Fabrique, which I think is billed actually in the UK as Catch Me, um, if I've anglicised the title. Um, we saw that last year in Edinburgh as part of our first Circus Voices scheme. So some of the comments. And um, we go up through this way. We go up through Essex to East Anglia. Um, then we have still got Santa Circus and Russell's International Circus touring in that region, down to the southeast. Um, then there is John Lawson's, there's Jane Miller's. Uh, who am I missing? Oh, Circus Zaire, of course. Cha ching And they're uh, doing a stint in my old stomping grounds around Hampshire. So all my Gosport Fair and Friends, go and see it with your kids, really great show. Um, and then they're going up off via Rochdale to Scotland 
and I think because the sun has come out, that is um, on several circus agendas this month. Um, Zippo Circus will also be heading up to Glasgow via a stint in Cheshire. Uh, Chinese State Circus are up on the west coast of Scotland as well. Um, that's after they've played um, through the Merseyside and um, Cumbria areas on the coast. Uh, I have to check my notes. Oh yeah, and of course, um, they've been touring Scotland all year already. Big Kid Circus are still up there. Um, they're beginning June in Edinburgh and then they're moving up towards Inverness and Moray. Back down to England. The northeast of England are playing host to Planet Circus, and in Pontefract are Paulos. Uh, that's a little bit of alliteration for you. Um, I'm beginning to wonder how useful it is running down every single tenting company, um, because by the time I make the videos, a lot of the dates are only publicised for the next week, maybe two weeks into the month for a lot of the companies. So most of the time, if I'm stating an area and the circuses that you could see, still click through onto their website link because that will give you the exact dates and information. Um, and yeah, if you have any thoughts on whether this is a valuable part of a video or if it's something that's interesting or how I could share more important information, do let me know. Um, Northwest, um, I've covered a little bit. So we'll skip over in over the Irish Sea into Northern Ireland, where Tom Duffy's Circus are still doing the rounds. Um, the Belfast Bad Boys Tumble Circus have actually gone down to Dublin for Riverside Festival from the 3rd to the 5th. Wales, uh, it's got Circus Mondeo. It's also having a visit from Circus Star, who are doing some dates that then take them into the southwest of England and into Wales and we've just had some, some breaking news that in Caerphilly there's going to be a brand new youth circus organisation um, well it's Citrus Arts who we've seen do plenty of shows in the past um, but they have got Citrus Pips beginning in June where they're offering taster sessions so if you know anyone on Caerphilly send them down or up you know. Good old Bristol has uh, pulled something new out of the bag again. They have got a show called Through the Summer, running from the 14th to the 18th by a company called Lavrak. And it's billed as an immersive festival circus experience, which I'm pretty excited about. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. If you are like me and you like getting involved, then there's a juggling clubs convention that's being organised by the Lancaster University Magic and Circus Society. Uh, I haven't got the dates for that. Oh yes, it's at the end of the month, uh, so over the long weekend, right at the end of June. So you can sign up for that. Links. Um, and it's festival season starting up. So the Worthing Summer of Circus is beginning on the 16th and 17th. Um, they're kicking off with a grand opening on the 16th with a show from Kin by Berlin Methodical Troupe. Um, that is going to be running on a series of weekends up until the end of August. It's not every weekend, so again, just check out those things. But lots of different um, shows and entertainments coming to you there. And in Luton, the Imagine Festival is running from the... Oh, I haven't written the dates down. Ah... Uh, 24th and 25th off the top of my head. We'll see if that's right. Um, and they've got um, a whole programme of outdoor work, um, includes acrobatics from Mimbre, and I never know if I'm saying that one right. Mimbre, 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 mm, I know. Um, and also there is this aerial flying trapeze trampoline type wire bit of everything on an in a purpose built rig it's an extravaganza called altitude uh, from gorilla circus so yeah that looks pretty exciting too uh, june is also the month that the edinburgh fringe program is launched so i will be scouring that and bringing you a well edinburgh fringe special uh, like a a what to look out for guide on one of the upcoming vlogs. 
So do subscribe to the channel. I think I said that already. Never say it too many times, can you? Um, yeah, there'll be there more, more things coming through. When I started the Circus Diaries, it was because I wanted to share information about the circus industry that I wasn't finding online. And it seems that online has moved much further away from reading things and it's more about watching things now. Um, so yeah, you get to watch my face a bit, lucky you. Um, <laughs> the videos are coming up, um, including shows that we've seen, so I'll be splitting reviews down. Um, won't be putting everything squashed into these monthly rundowns, that will be just a what's on guide from now. Um, but the shows that I have seen this month are um, Circus Zaya, Ching, um, Gifford Circus, and the one that I didn't mention yet, Moscow State Circus. Um, they are still on tour, but as at the time of recording this video, they were waiting to update their um, their tour dates, so I don't know where they're going to be the, the next few weeks. Um, but all three shows were great. Uh, I was going to say brilliant then, brilliant, great. I had a great time. Um, and I've seen Moscow State Circus mm, three, four times, and this was by far and away my favourite. They've done a really great job. Circus Sayer, I have seen twice, and both times I was really impressed with the quality of show that can be created from. It's quite a small family company. They don't have big publicity budgets and promo budgets. You don't hear as much about them as you do of some of the other circuses. But actually, really great entertainment and probably a lot better value for money as well. Um, and Gifford Circus, I've seen their last three shows, um, all directed by Cal McChrystal. This one, I didn't enjoy it quite as much as last year, and that might be because I prefer Cowboys to the Elizabethan Ruffs, but um, yeah, it still creates a really magical environment. Um, so a quick rundown. Mm. And what did we think? Hmm. And the winners are... For the highest technical achievement with skills, Moscow State Circus! Uh, except for uh, skipping, and that's Gifford Circus with the Soul Troupe. Best Lights, Circus Zaire. Best Costumes, is a tie between Gifford Circus and Moscow State Circus and best overall atmosphere goes to Circus Zaire which means each circus has two awards which means they're all winners and so are we. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> just finishing my tea. Um, it looks like I'm doing product placement, doesn't it? <laughs> I bought this with my own money, it's my own souvenir, I just love it. <laughs> um, but what I loved about those three shows um, was that it shows that um, it's horses for courses, isn't it? You can have very different productions that are all excellent in their own ways and they're all reaching different audiences. And um, it says a lot about why I get annoyed about the use of the word contemporary circus to describe a genre because all of these shows that I've just talked about are contemporary, they're happening now, of the moment, but they work with a classical circus format of unconnected acts um, and usually the word contemporary circus is used to describe experimental work that's that's pushing particular boundaries of um, artistic concepts um, but I will often use the term post-classical circus instead you might hear that or uh, or experimental circus and that's that's my reason why so uh, I mean these shows are thoroughly up to the minute modern even though they're using a classical format but they are contemporary of now so I just get a little bit of a bee in my bonnet about that terminology um, I haven't <laughs> had much time for reading this month and I'm really behind in my book reviews. I have got this to flash at you. 
my um it's a king pole special but it's from before i ever subscribed to the king pole 159 i don't know when that was um i'll probably find out i think it was about 10 years ago actually yeah september 2006 um but this was water spectacles so um following my trip to blackpool circus um i thought i wanted to find out more um so i've been reading that um that's about it really from me for this month i know the video's gone on longer than usual um but as i say i will be splitting them down from now on so click on all the links send me all your feedbacks give me lots of love and i will see you down the road bye